Julius Randle has been playing some of the best basketball of his career recently. And also, we have an update on the Zach Levine New York Knicks saga, and you don't want to miss it. So, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. My name is Chris, and we're going to jump right into this video as we always do. Because, first things first, we have to talk Julius Randle. The man has been playing like a superstar, he has been unlocked. And he is just absolutely balling out right now. This is some of the best basketball of his career over this stretch. That is so nice to see, especially considering when looking at Randall and how he started this season on that bad ankle, he has completely turned it around and looked like an all-star starter level player. He has been the Knicks' best player over the past few games. Say the last 10 game stretch, Julius has been the number one option. He has been balling out. He has been showing everyone that he is not at all someone who's just going to be good one year, then bad the next. What happened is he was injured, and now he has been healthy, and he has been playing like a monster. If you just take a look right here, these are Randall's last nine games. In it, he has been averaging 27 points, 9 rebounds, 5.5 assists, and he's shooting 57% from the field and 38.5% from three. Also getting 83% from the free throw line is nothing to sneeze at for a power forward. Randall has been so good. He has been insanely good for the Knicks. I, I know some Knicks fans are never going to like Julius Randall. You made an opinion about him in, your first, in his first season here. You wanted him traded the next year because it's like, hey... No, let's trade him because I don't like him or whatever. I know there is that group of Knicks fans that no matter what happens, you are going to disagree with Randall and you are just not going to want him on the team and he just upsets you. And that is fine. I'm not saying you have to like him. I'm saying you have to respect the fact that this man has been tremendous this season. Sure, he started slowly. He was coming off of an ankle surgery just a few months prior where he was in a boot for a month. The fact that he started the season is impressive. He should not have played. I'm upset that he did. First of all, his stats would look a lot better. But just in the sense of he was not helping the Knicks, he could not have been helping himself playing like that. But now he is back. He is in a groove. He has been one of the most reliable shooters on the Knicks. In the game against the Jazz, he was one of three New York Knicks players, the other being Emmanuel Quickly and Dante DiVincenzo, who hit a three-pointer against the Jazz. The Jazz are not some team that is going to stop you from making any three ever. They are not some elite NBA team. The Knicks did not show up that game, but Julius did. He showed up instantly at 14 points pretty quickly into the, into the first quarter. The man has been tremendous. Look here. In December, his stats in December are 29 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists while shooting 61% from the field, 47% from deep, and 86% from the free throw line. And as you see on the Reddit post, it says that unfortunately the Knicks are only 2-3 and three in that span, but Julius is absolutely playing amazing basketball. I'm not sure if you can find anyone in the league who's playing better over the last few weeks. Give this man his flowers. We are giving Julius Randle his flowers right now. There is one person in the comments who has been consistently saying that we are hating on Randall a lot. He comments on basically all of our videos. As I said, I read every single comment to all the videos. I try to respond to some. I cannot respond to all of them. There's sometimes just too many. But I hear you. I hear you. I'm blanking on your name right now, but I hear you. I get it. Darielle and I have pretty similar opinions on this Knicks team and how far they can go. That being said... I don't want to give Julius Randle away at all because how good he genuinely is for the franchise and also everything that he's done for the team, it has to be shown. And right now, Randle is the best player on the Knicks. There's no debating it. Since coming back from the migraine, RJ has been playing very inefficiently. It's been rough to see after he had a tremendous start to the season. Brunson's in a massive shooting slump right now. Mitchell Robinson's out with an injury. There's no argument to who the Knicks' best player is going into the next game that they play tonight, Friday, December 15th, against the Phoenix Suns. Randall is the guy for the Knicks. He is their best player. They're going to need him because the Suns have a lot of isolation scoring between Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. 
They need Randall to be at his best. They also need Bronson to be at the, They need the whole team to be at the best. It's the Suns. They're really good when they're all healthy. They're a dangerous offense. The Knicks are not good at guarding threes, so they're going to have to play good, really good offense. And that's going to have to start with Julius Randle. Randle has been awesome. I cannot stress it enough how hype I am to see Julius Randle playing like this. I'm a, I really am a huge fan of Julius Randle. I'm a massive fan of his game. I think he's really great for the Knicks. He's the reason why Brunson series, the reason why we've made the playoffs in the last decade. That is Julius Randle, after all. He's the one who started it all. He revived the Knicks in a similar way that Carmelo Anthony did, except with Randle, none of us saw it coming. He has been amazing for this franchise. Shout out Julius Randle. Cannot wait to see this game tonight. I'm so hyped to see Randle keep this fire going. This man is playing like an all-star starter right now. If he does not make the all-star team, this will be ridiculous. I don't care about the slow start. We know how he's playing now. We know how he's playing when he's healthy. Arguably, since he's been healthy, this has been his best NBA season. So be sure to not miss a Knicks game because Randall is balling out right now. But with that, let's move into the second topic of today. And that is that the Knicks have not shown interest in Zach Levine. And oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am not going to go out here and disparage an NBA player who would absolutely mix me if we played basketball. But here's what I will say. I don't want Zach Levine within 50 feet of Madison Square Garden. I, I don't even want him on the Nets because that's too close to New York, to the New York Knicks. Because the Nets, let's be real, they're, they're still the New Jersey Nets. Like, come on, New York, we all love the Knicks. They don't make these Nets Santa hats. They make these Knicks Santa hats. But guys, in all seriousness, Zach Levine is a tremendous player when he's on his game. But as Scott Perry said a few months back, he's only been in five playoff games ever. He's on a $40 million contract. And right now, the Bulls are playing pretty well without him. Take a look right here. League sources have previously told NBC Sports Chicago that the New York Knicks, another rumored landing spot for Levine, of course, have, ser have never seriously engaged or shown interest. Same goes, at least for now, for the Philadelphia 76ers and the Miami Heat. Sixers Digest, you can handle that. Heat Digest, you can handle that. Knicks Digest is us, though, so let's talk about that. I do think that Leon Rose has probably at some point called Chicago and asked what the asking price is for Zach Levine, whether it was serious interest or more just gauging the market as a whole. I think there's been some content or some sort of connection between the Knicks and Levine but I don't think it's been anything serious it feels like there's been enough rumors that Leon's at least contacted the Bulls and be like out of curiosity what's your asking price for Levine maybe it had something to do with Donovan Mitchell or some completely different player who's just also on the trade market and he's just valuing say what's the price for an all-star lo or lower all-star level shot creator right now not the greatest defender and Donovan Mitchell is a better player than Zach Levine don't get me wrong but it is a way to gauge the market. It's very likely that that's why Leon may have contacted the Bulls at some point. But the Knicks not showing interest is a good thing. Zach Levine's part of Clutch Sports. No one on Clutch Sports wants to play on the Knicks because Rich Paul and LeBron James don't want them to. And because of that, I don't want Zach Levine on the Knicks because I think he would leave once he becomes a free agent. And also, I don't see how he fits. Who are you trading for Zach Levine? You're certainly not trading Brunson, obviously. He's untouchable. You better not trade Julius Randle, who's been way better than Zach Levine this season. You cannot trade R.J. Barrett just because the fact is you have more control over R.J. Barrett for less money than you have control over Levine for more money. And also, I think R.J. right now has a higher ceiling of talent than what Levine is currently playing at. Levine's in year 10. He's had a real past of knee injuries. I don't think the Knicks should go for him. He's not a great defender. I don't know why the Knicks would go for a minus defender on the team right now because they're really supposed to be a defensive team if Tibbs would just let them guard three-pointers better. It's one of those things where Zach Levine just does not fit with the Knicks as well as the Knicks do not fit with Zach Levine, and that should really be the end of it. Let's just take a look right here. Here's another reason why I don't want him. This is more of a Kobe White thing more than anything, but really Kobe White had the other night 26 points, 11 assists, 7 rebounds, 0 turnovers. In the last 7 games since Zach, since Zach Levine has been out and White has taken his spot, Kobe White has averaged 26 points, 6 rebounds, 6.5 assists, 5 threes made per game, and the Bulls have a 5-2 and two record. That is better numbers than what Zach Levine has been putting up all season, and they're also winning in the process. That is worrisome. So now if you're talking, what would the Knicks give up for Zach Levine? 
I would give up Evan Fournier and I don't even know nothing else because I just don't want to make the salary work. I don't want to give up anyone for him. I'd give up Fournier and like two second rounders and the Bulls could obviously get a better deal than that and it still wouldn't even make sense for the Knicks. So no, I'm totally out on Zach Levine. No more Zach Levine talk. This is the end of the Zach Levine Knicks Digest era. So thank you so much for watching this Zach Levine era. And also thank you for watching about Julius Randle. Guys, we are on that grind. We're making a video every day, including holidays. We're working on holidays. You'll see me on Christmas. Might be pre-recorded, but you'll see me on Christmas if you need some Christmas Knicks Digest. You need some Knicks Miss Digest. I'm so sorry about that. I'm going to end it here. Guys, have a great day. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, go Knicks.